You were the love of my life, and I couldn't imagine living a moment of it without you. Until I caught you effing someone behind my back, and now I want nothing to do with you. So have fun spending the rest of this vacation alone, and the rest of your life without me. Finding out about my wife cheating on me was undoubtedly the worst feeling I've ever had. Nicole and I were high school sweethearts, and she's the only person I've ever been with, so that made the affair especially difficult to deal with. And it's why I felt so angry and determined to make her pay for what she did to me, and make her feel something on the level of what her affair did me. And I'm pretty sure I accomplished that goal with the revenge plot you're about to hear. For the first 27 years of our relationship, I always trusted Nicole. She never gave me a reason not to. But in our 28th year, I started noticing some drastic changes in her behavior towards me. She was no longer as affectionate as she once was. Things like kissing each other goodbye in the morning before work and that sort of thing suddenly slowed down to a halt. She suddenly was in too much of a hurry or too distracted by her phone or tablet to do these kinds of things. And the more I would attempt to get this kind of attention from her, the more she would pull away to the point of even having an attitude towards me for even trying. When we would get busy in the bedroom, it was clear she wasn't really into it anymore and was sort of just going through the motions during each session. I wasn't sure what was going on exactly, but the change in her behavior was more than noticeable and starting to have me concerned. Nicole and I are both very active people. I try to go to the gym at least three weekdays and on the weekends every week if I can, and Nicole usually goes a few days a week too or fits in some time working out in our house because we have some fitness equipment in one of the kids' bedrooms since both of our kids have moved out now. Usually, we go to the gym together at least two or three times a week. It's sort of a hobby we both share, and around the same time when her affection towards me started fading, she also started wanting to go to the gym alone instead of with me. She was going for longer sessions now, basically giving up her home workouts altogether. The excuse she gave for why she no longer wanted to go to the gym with me was that she needed to rework her schedule because she was now also working longer hours at work. So at this point, she's barely home in the evenings. She comes in not long before bed, immediately gets in the shower, drinks her post-workout shake with a bite to eat, and before long, she's back asleep. We weren't even having dinner together anymore. So at this point, all of this strange behavior starts making me wonder if maybe she's cheating on me and having an affair behind my back. I get on Reddit and look at subs like r slash relationships or r slash surviving infidelity to see what other people have to say about their wife cheating on them. And I check out some articles and YouTube videos. Most of the signs I learn about for a cheating wife, she's displaying. So I'm pretty confident there's something going on. I'm thinking maybe she's cheating with someone at work, or a friend of a friend possibly. She does have a group of girlfriends she spends time with fairly often. I'm thinking there's possibly clues on her Facebook or something. Maybe a message from one of her friends, a picture of the guy somewhere, or likes or comments on her posts from someone I'm unaware of. So I scroll through weeks of her Facebook posts and comments looking for clues, but I'm not really seeing any signs of who this person could be. So either they aren't active on Facebook, or she's doing a great job of hiding it. Then I get on her Instagram account and do the same thing, looking through pictures and comments to see any signs. Nicole has many pictures of us together or family photos with us and our daughter and son. But since she's really into fitness, she also posts pictures just of herself to show off her progress, plus videos and that sort of thing. Well, I start to notice that on all of her pictures that don't have me or our family, including ones of just her out with her friends, because she has a lot of those too, she's getting a lot of comments from this one particular guy. I mean, literally every picture has some sort of comment or emoji from this dude, and many of the comments she would reply to. So then I try to get more information by looking at his Instagram account, and I can also see that Nicole has been fairly active on his. So then I request records from our cell phone company and see that Nicole had been regularly interacting with one specific phone number, spending a significant amount of time with this person on the phone. But as far as text records go, she had deleted most of the conversations between them, so there was nothing incriminating left to see. Just a bunch of out-of-context comments which don't make much sense without the other messages that she clearly deleted. But now I have enough info to know something's definitely going on. So to connect the dots, I get back on Facebook, and although this guy hasn't really interacted with her on there, he does have a profile which I'm able to find. And listed on his profile is the same number from the phone records. So there's no doubt in my mind at this point that she must be having an affair. 
at least an emotional one. No one's on the phone as much as the two of them were without being involved in some deeper way. So now I'm on the hunt for some hard evidence. I do some more research and find out that my service provider doesn't keep records of deleted messages, but they are still available for a certain time frame in a hidden deleted message folder in the phone, which many people don't know about. So I'm praying that Nicole doesn't know about this deleted message folder, and now I just have to find a way to get access to her phone without her knowing. So every evening, Nicole drinks this post-workout shake, and it's kind of like a protein shake type of thing, which is supposed to help your muscles and body recover from a heavy workout. Since she's pretty busy, she usually will make her drinks a few days in advance, three or four at a time, and just have them waiting for her in the fridge. This way, she only has to take time to make them a couple times a week and have them ready and waiting, instead of making a new one every single night. So the last day before she has to make another set of drinks, I crush up some sleeping pills and mix them into her last one and prepare for her to have a deep sleep while I'm in her phone getting the info I need. Once she's asleep, I make some noise to test whether or not it's actually working. I first say her name softly, Nicole, Nicole, and I give her a little nudge, still sleeping. So then I say it a little louder, Nicole, still fast asleep. Finally, just to be sure, I turn on the most annoying alarm sound from my phone and hold the phone beside her face while we're laying in bed. She's still far away in dreamland. So now that I know she's not likely to get up anytime soon, I grab her phone and unsurprisingly see that she has a password. I make a couple of attempts to guess it with common things like 1234. And luckily, she's so stupid, she uses our kids' birthdays as her pass. Nice one, Nicole. Now I'm hoping she's also stupid enough to have the evidence I want still in her deleted messages folder. And to my pleasant surprise, she is. So I open it up and there they all are. All the messages describing her misdoings right in my hands. Messages of her flirting back and forth with him, sending naughty texts back and forth, and other conversations that clearly show what the two of them have been doing together. Although part of me felt some sort of sense of pride or accomplishment that I actually found what I was looking for and that my plan worked, it was bittersweet because sure I already knew she was doing something behind my back, but seeing the truth right there, perfectly written out for me, was excruciatingly painful. But part of me was also sort of relieved that I found it, even though this was the last thing I would ever want to find. But knowing the truth is better than letting her continue to get away with this while I'm clueless about it. Once it sunk in that she had actually been betraying me for a few months at this point, and that my relationship of nearly three decades was basically over, I felt like a completely broken man. I just wasn't myself anymore after that. I figured things out on a Wednesday, and that Thursday after, having to go into work and face all my coworkers and attempt to act normal like I hadn't just realized my soulmate had been betraying me and flipped my world upside down was the hardest day of my life. Not to mention trying to act normal around my kids. It was obvious something was wrong and took me a good few days to even try to act normal again. But I didn't act normal towards Nicole. I couldn't. It was like something had switched off in me, and for the next few days, every time I saw or spoke to her, I would just have images of the text I'd seen flashing in my mind. She could clearly tell something was wrong and off about my behavior, and tried to ask what it was and console me. But I just played it off like it was nothing and said I wasn't really feeling well and wanted her to leave me alone. After what I saw in those messages, it's hard to tell if her acts of concern were even genuine, but given what she was doing behind my back, that tells me they couldn't possibly be. She can't possibly actually care, or else she wouldn't be having a whole other relationship behind my back after everything I've done for her and all we've been through. Nicole was the one person I had always turned to for support when I wasn't feeling my best or was down about something. When my parents passed away, when I was laid off during the 2008 recession, but now she was the cause of my grief. So, since I obviously couldn't rely on her to help me get through it, I had to turn to my best friend Carl. Carl has known Nicole and I since middle school. He's always been there for me and I him. So I go to his place the following Saturday after D-Day and tell him everything that happened. He already had some knowledge of the way Nicole had been treating me because I had conversations with him about this in recent past weeks, but he had no knowledge of my suspicions about the affair. The chat I had with Carl that night made me feel quite a bit better. 
and helped me formulate my plan for revenge. Carl tells me that night that he suspected Nicole might be having an affair based on what I had been telling him, but he didn't want to meddle in my relationship. He also says that he never actually liked Nicole, even before I started dating her. He said he never wanted to tell me because he thought it would be inappropriate, but now that the cat's out of the bag, he had no reason to hold back. Then he's the one who suggests I get revenge on her for what she's been doing to me. And he says he'll help me create and pull off the following plan. If there's one thing I've learned from all the articles I read in the podcast I listened to while doing my research, it's that when it comes to females, even cheaters can't stand being cheated on. And once they feel like a man doesn't want them, they just want him more. It's kind of weird how the female mind works in that way. You can dote on them and give them all the time and attention they could ever want, but they just take it for granted until you take it away. Ignore them, and that's when they actually start appreciating and begging for your attention. They always want what they can't have. So after that night at Carl's, I was still in a pretty deep negative mental state, but I started putting on a straight face in front of my kids and coworkers, and especially in front of Nicole. Instead of acting all sad and sorry, I decided to act like absolutely nothing was bothering me. But if she tried in any way to give or get attention from me, I acted completely disinterested. I started spending a lot more time at the gym and with Carl away from home, going places where I could meet new people and get my mind off of all the drama at the house. And since my kids are both grown and living out of the house now, I had no reason to be there, so I barely was. Some nights I would even crash at Carl's place. I started getting in the best shape of my life and there were noticeable changes in my appearance. And through all of this, I would periodically check Nicole's phone to see what she might be saying about everything that was happening with me, plus gathering as much evidence as possible of her affair. I would go out and meet women with Carl at bars and pool halls, cause he's two years divorced and single, but I would keep all of my interactions with people on a friendly level. This way, there would be no evidence for Nicole to try to use against me in court. But if I did have interest in any women, I would always have Carl take their numbers and interact with them through his phone so there'd be no evidence in mine. As far as the tabs I kept on Nicole, just as I had hoped, my new changes in behavior were really starting to drive her mad. I was no longer her clueless chump husband just sitting at home alone, begging for her attention, waiting for her to come home after sleeping with some loser just to ignore me and go straight to bed. Now I was actually living my life with no concern for her whatsoever, and she couldn't stand it. She started telling her friend Kim about it all, and based on the text I read, it was clear she was starting to feel like I was falling out of love with her, which I definitely had. In fact, not only did I not love her anymore, at this point, I despised her. But making her feel like I didn't love her was only part of my plan. I still had something much more deviant up my sleeve. She mentioned to Kim she felt she'd messed up by driving me away and realized that she'd been taking me for granted. But for a while, her affair continued. Then one day, I noticed she has the guy's phone number blocked, and phone records show that it only took about five weeks for my plan to start taking effect and cause her to get rid of him. But this wasn't the ultimate goal of my plan. At this point, I had every intention of divorcing the wench, but only after I have her desperately begging for the life she chose to throw in the trash. And the way I would reveal to her that I know what she's been up to and finally end it would be amazing. So around the time she cuts off the loser she's been doing behind my back, she starts being the perfect wife again, offering to get on her knees at all times of the day, cooking me amazing meals, which of course I allowed her to do. And now that he's out of the picture, I began phase two. I start acting like I'm coming around and getting back to the place where we used to be. I start giving a little more attention and a little more whenever she tries for it. At this point, I already have mounds of evidence of the things I need to give to my lawyer, and I make sure not to produce any evidence myself that she could use against me. But based on her conversations with Kim, it's obvious she also thinks I've been seeing someone, but she doesn't want to confront me with her suspicions given what she's been doing behind my back. So I slowly start spending more time with her at home, so there's no question I'm not having an affair myself. And during this entire time, I'm slowly taking money out of our bank account to buy gold and silver and keep a lot of it in cash, safely stored in a fireproof safe at Carl's house. Nicole has never paid attention to our finances. Sure, she loves to spend money, but I pretty much take care of all that stuff, 
so she had no idea I was doing this and let it go for a good few months until a majority of our joint savings account was completely wiped out and sitting safely at Carl's. So as I said, I start giving her more and more attention and reacting positively to her attempts to get our relationship back on track. And she starts to tell Kim how she's happier than ever, how she regrets the affair, but is so happy I never found out about it, and how she doesn't know what was wrong with me before, but now that I seem back to my normal self, she thinks that our relationship is better than ever. She says she'll never betray me again and blah blah blah. So once I see her say this to Kim, I know my plan is turning out better than I'd even hoped. And our anniversary is coming up, so I plan this huge trip to celebrate in the Bahamas. But I also rent a storage unit in Carl's name and have him and his nephew get all of my stuff out of the house that same week during the anniversary trip. I give him pictures and a list of all the items I want to move. And for the first few days of the trip, I have all this really romantic stuff planned to knock Nicole off her feet. And I even pop a few little blue pills to really rock her world in bed in a way like I haven't done in 20 years. Keep in mind, this is also after all my recent effort in the gym has me almost in better shape than I've ever been. So then on day four of the vacation, I plan this big fancy dinner and write her a fancy love note that says, Dear Nicole, you're the love of my life and I couldn't imagine living a moment of it without you until I caught you effing someone behind my back. So have fun spending the rest of this trip by yourself and the rest of your life without me. Then I put the note in an envelope with the divorce papers and had the folder under my belt and shirt. I tell Nicole I have to go to the bathroom, but instead go to the waiter and tell him I have a surprise for my wife and to wait five minutes, then go hand Nicole this envelope, giving me plenty of time to block her phone number, grab my things from our room, and head to the airport to wait for an early flight that I'd already booked myself. When I get back, Carl gives me a ride to pick up my car, and I end up staying with him until I manage to get my own place a few weeks later. And from that point, I never spoke to or saw Nicole again without my lawyer present. If you dig this video, click here to watch another one, click like, leave a comment, and share it. Those things help out the channel and are greatly appreciated. And please leave a five-star review on any surveys you see in your feed. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. Hope you all take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.